But to truly ensure the safety of his reformed republic, Sola needed to be sure his enemies, the remaining supporters of Marius and Cinna, were dead. Sola introduced a list of 80 names of men who were prescribed. A person prescribed was outside the protection of the law, and their heads would warrant a nice sum for the killer. The prescribed man's property would be confiscated and auctioned at a fraction of its value. Who wants to report for a report? What started as a death list of 80 names would, over the course of a year, expand to up to 1,600. Most were rich Romans, some were senators. However, a few of the prescribed were just wealthy men whose property Sulla desired. Slaves killed masters, friends killed friends, and family turned on family for profit and to please Sulla. Many were killed in this short period of prescriptions, and Roman society was damaged by it. The fear scarred into the Roman conscience. The prescription lists were sent outside of Rome, so fugitives were not even safe in the Italian countryside, liable to be killed by a stranger for profit. Killers got their reward, and Sola and his loyalists reaped the benefits of buying the dead man's cheap property at auction. While many suffered and were killed by his decree, Sola's life was going gangbusters. For all his luck, he added Felix to his name. Sola Felix. Sola the Fortunate. Sola the Lucky. It was Sola Felix who could proudly tell his army and loyalists, We saved the city! Looking at the actions of Marius, Cinna, and Sola, a politician could use their loyal army to strong-arm control of the Republic. Sola was the first Roman general to use his loyal army upon Rome, but within six years, Roman generals had taken control of the city and politics three times. A man with a loyal army could dictate Roman politics to his will. A loyal army granted unmatched power to a general, allowing him to shape the laws to his advantage and destroy his enemies. In Marius and Sola's competitive pursuits of leadership in Arcturitas, we see competition tearing the Republic apart. Both men were very ambitious, and rose high in their lives. Marius was a novus homo, who started with nothing, from an undistinguished family who defended the Republic and was consul seven times. Sola, the patrician of an unaccomplished house, also had to earn his own acclaim, and wrestle back his command from those who stole from him and would become dictator. When each stood in each other's way of accomplishing their goal, they didn't hesitate to tear the other down and kill his enemy's allies. Simply put by Adrian Goldsworthy, this series of civil wars, just like later ones, had little to do with conflicting ideology or policies, but were violent extensions of the traditional competition between individuals. Marius and Sola competed to be the greatest and most famous Roman of their lifetime. To actually accomplish that, however, they would have to tear the other down. Once one of them had power, they shaped the Republic to best maintain power. While Sola may have thought the end of a restored and reformed Republic justified the civil wars he launched, his reforms were not to last, nor was his peace. <laughs>